All right, we'll start the meeting with the pledge to the flag. Bruce, would you lead us? Thank you very much, Mr. Stebbins. Welcome everybody to the May 5th, 2022 Village Board meeting. Uh, we'll start the meeting tonight with, we have three public hearings. Um, so we'll start with public hearing number one. This is a public hearing to consider a proposed local law to enact section 345-45 of the village code, which would allow the construction of permanent or temporary handicap ramps in any yard, provided they are 10 feet from the yard lot line and five feet from any side or rear yard lot line upon the issuance of a building permit. Uh, Mo, can we get the reading of the proof of publication? Yes, notice is hereby given that pursuant to section 7-706 of the Village Law of the State of New York and pursuant to resolution of the Village Board of the Village of Baldwinsville, adopted April 7, 2022, a public hearing will be held by the Village Board at Village Hall 16 West Genesee Street on the 5th day of May at 7.30 p.m. to consider a proposed local law to enact section 345-45 of the village code, which would allow the construction of permanent or temporary handicap ramps in any yard, provided that they are 10 feet from the front yard lot line, and five feet from any side or rear lot line upon the issuance of a building permit. A copy of the proposal of the law may be examined by any interested party at the office of the village clerk. At the time and place of the hearing, all interested persons will be given an opportunity to be heard. Okay, thank you very much, Mo. Is there anyone uh, wishing to speak in favor of the proposal? Seeing no one, will, is there anyone wishing to speak against the proposal? Seeing no one, can I get a motion to adjourn and close the public hearing? Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Carried. Okay, we got one down, we have two to go. Now, we just start, Mo, or do we have to wait till 7.35? 7.35. We can We can start, okay. The second public hearing is to consider a proposed local law to repeal and restate chapter 292 of the village code to institute particular regulations regarding defective sidewalks and to allow the superintendent of public works or the code enforcement officer to order such repairs or replacements and enforce the regulations which are adopted. Can I get a reading of the proof of publication? Notice is hereby given that pursuant to section 7-706 of the Village Law of the State of New York and pursuant to resolution of the Village Board adopted April 7, 2022, a public hearing will be held by the Village Board in Village Hall 16 West Tennessee Street on the fifth day of May at 7.35 p.m to consider a proposed local law to repeal and restate chapter 292 of the village code to institute particular regulations regarding defective sidewalks and to allow the superintendent of public works or the, or the code enforcement officer to order such repairs or replacements and enforce the regulations which are adopted. A copy of the proposed local law <clears throat> was available to be examined by any interested party and at the time and place of the hearing, all interested persons will be given an opportunity to be heard. Very good. Thank you, Mo. Um, can I get uh, anyone that wants to speak in favor of the proposal? Seeing none, is there anyone who would like to speak against the proposal? Seeing none, can I get a motion to adjourn and close the public hearing? So moved. Second. Moving a second, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Carried. Uh, we have our third public hearing. To consider a proposed local law to provide for the regulation of the seasonal sale of food from fixed outdoor locations by the use of a temporary or movable structure or use of a motor vehicle. Um, can I get a reading of the 
proof of publication. Notice is hereby given that pursuant to section 7-706 of the Village Law of the State of New York and pursuant to resolution of the Village Board of the Village of Baldwinsville adopted April 7, 2022, a public hearing will be held by the Village Board at Village Hall 16 West Genesee Street on the first day of May at 7.40 p.m. to consider a proposal of the law to provide for the regulation of the seasonal sale of food from fixed outdoor locations by use of a temporary or movable structure or use of a motor vehicle. A copy of the proposed local law may be examined by any interested party at the office of the village clerk. At the time and place of the hearing, all interested persons will be given an opportunity to be heard. Okay, thanks, Mo. Uh, anyone wishing to speak in favor of the proposal? Seeing none, uh, anyone wishing to speak against the proposal? I did receive an email uh, today from Mike Johnson at WT Brews, and I'll, I'll paraphrase his email. Uh, he wasn't totally against it, but he uh, had some concerns. He, he felt like the permitting process would, requires a nominal fee for the season and the proof of the truck that his health codes was uh, appropriate, but he didn't like uh, Section 24235J it implies the code officer needs to inspect for every visit. He was noting that a lot of times uh, food trucks are set up in the evening and weekends, and he found that to be practical that a, uh, a code enforcement officer would have to go do that on the evenings and weekends and off hours. He also noted the uh, provision for criminal background checks, driver's license copies and fees outlined in 242-267 and 242-33B. For not just the operator, but all people working on the truck seems completely impractical. He said many of the helpers in the food trucks are young kids who may not even have a driver's license, and running a background check on someone under 18 seems uh, you'd require parental uh, consent and seems overly invasive. Uh, he found that that causes a discrimination, in his opinion, to food trucks because uh, restaurant workers, uh, brick and mortar food establishments, wouldn't have the same requirement. Okay, thanks, Eric. Um, we'll address that later when we address that under uh, pending business. Uh, anybody else wishing to speak against the proposal? Again, I get a motion to adjourn and close the public hearing. I'll make a motion. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Carried. <laughs> Now we'll move to the regular meeting. Um, can I get a motion to approve the village board meeting minutes from April 21st, 2022? Second. Any questions, changes? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Carried. Citizens comments. Um, we have two listed. Um, Lions Club is uh, Jack Osinski here to speak. Yeah. Okay, Jack, come on up. Hey, Mr. Call. My fault. I wasn't where the phone was. <laughs> I'm assuming the entire board is aware of the gift of the swings that we have provided to the village for using Community Park uh, from 2020. At that time, uh, in July of 2020, we made a proposal to this board in person um, and in writing that the Lions Club would provide a very specific swing set for using Community Park. That swing set included a very unique swing, which is a, a platform swing for people, for children that are bound in a wheelchair. We didn't make the proposal or the suggestion in a vacuum. One of the first things we did is we were thinking about it as we contacted all the school nurses in the elementary schools locally. But we asked them if they had Without, re without breaching any confidentiality, if they had any students that could use it, and if they felt it would be uh, a good idea in a village park. And they all agreed, uh, and they also all advised me that indeed, they did have students that were wheelchair bound. They also advised us that it would be good to have a seat, what's referred to as an adaptive seat, for uh, kids that need a little more support, both emotional and physical, uh, while they're in a swing. 
Consequently, when we put the final proposal together, it included one adapted seat for those children that need just a little extra support. It included the very unique wheelchair swing, which would allow a, a child in a wheelchair to swing probably for the first time in their lives, uh, as well as two standard sling chairs, sling seats, if you will. Um, so we went ahead and we purchased it after making the proposal to the village again in writing. Uh, in July 2020, when we made that proposal, um, the board at the time accepted it, approved it, loved the idea, and we were directed at that time to work through the DPW. Uh, the DPW superintendent at the time, of course, was Steve Darpangelo. Steve, of course, has since left uh, to the private sector. However, right after that meeting, we went ahead and we ordered the swing. Uh, the swing set cost us uh, just south of $4,000. It cost us $3,936. It was delivered about three months afterwards, and it's currently sitting in our storage building at the park. After we ordered it, and following the direction of this board to work with the DPW chief, Steve Darkangelo, we actually met with Steve three separate times to talk about the swing issue as well as a couple of other issues we wanted to consider in the park or to see what direction we could take in the park, um, such as a wildflower field and, and some different things. But Steve loved the idea. Uh, he was thinking of placing it. Our, our suggestion was to place it between the new restrooms and the new picnic pavilion, since the new picnic pavilion was on an accessible route and was designed for access for people with wheelchairs. We thought that was a perfect spot. Uh, so we met with Steve a couple of times. Uh, the proposal indicated that the Lions would purchase the swing set and would erect it and put it in place. But it required services in kind from the village, which included site preparation um, and site repair, uh, which Steve had no problem with at the time. After our third, our third meeting with Steve, he did let us know that he was leaving the village and that he would pack up all the information and make sure his replacement had all of the information and knew everything that was expected of the village. Whether or not that, whether or not that happened, I can't <laughs> I'm just going by what Steve told us he was going to do. I recently had a couple of conversations with uh, the DPW superintendent, who has indicated that he has no budget to do the site prep for our suite. Uh, and he, he has no schedule to provide any labor or services relative to this way. Uh, the Lions can't handle that. The Lions have raised $400,000 and bought the swing. It's sitting there <clears throat> ready for installation. Um, we do not have the means to continue with site prep. Um, we've got the manpower to install it, but we do not have the equipment or the funds to do the site prep as well as provide eyeglasses, hearing aids, and everything else the Lions do within the village. We're hoping for some help from the village board. Okay, any, any comments from board members? What's the issue was, did we not, we didn't budget anything when Steve was here, correct? No, I don't think we put. I, I can I can speak yeah, on, on what I know. Yeah, about. You know what's, what would it cost you? Right. right. I, I can speak what I know about it. And, and Jack did call me, and and uh, Steve left. The, I have nothing on what was said, what wasn't said, and um, um, Jack did contact me a couple of times, and there was some confusion on where it was going to go, and it got changed a, a, a few times, and and uh, we weren't one hundred percent sure where we were going to put our our things at, and then we finally got that figured out. And we kind of said it would be nice. To, and this was brought up, and I thought it was a great idea. But they said, you know, you, if you have a handicap one, it should be near the other swing set. So they all can play together, which was fine. And then, you know, originally, Jack, you said you, were gonna, you guys were going to put it in. And then, then it changed, and you weren't. And then if, and it went to a couple other things. And then you were going to get it somewhere else. And then it came back that, that it was going to stay here. And I, and, I, and I told you, um, if, if there's site prep, which we're doing the site prep for ours, I said, I just have to clear it with the board. And once we once we get that far, that 
you know, we'll see how that goes. And then at, at some point, one point he wanted us to, to install it. And I said, we're not installing ours. We don't, we don't install those. Right. And, and uh, um, we did change the plan that we had and included yours on the end because there's a path that's got to be provided to it too. And, and uh, recently ours has been ordered, it was due this week. And like everything else, they told us it might be another four or five weeks. So, you know, we can't control that. Um, as far as doing site work, you know, if the board says to do the site work, then we'll do the site work. If that's not a really big deal. You and I had talked about the mulch, and the mulch is very expensive. You know, the, the mulch is as expensive as you pay for the swing set. And, I said, and, I, and what I said is we have no money for that, you know, and, and uh, so that's kind of where we are. And, and uh, um, the... Uh, we were hoping ours was going to be here this week. We've been, uh, yours is and it's been a long time. I, I, I grant you, this yeah. has been going back and forth for two years. And we haven't got ours done in two years. And now finally that's moving along. And you had, you had told me that, you, that this project was holding up all your grants. I felt bad, but I said, I'm not sure what to do with that. Yeah, it is holding up. The installation is holding up several grants. Yeah. And yeah. we may have to refund one of the grants because we didn't close the grant. Uh, within the year. But at any rate, we are looking at mulch. We're looking at both rubber mulch and the tree mulch. That's very expensive. Well, the rubber mulch is indeed very expensive. The rubber mulch, if we proceed with the rubber mulch is six inches thick, which is referred to as impact attenuator, the fancy term for it, um, it would go down about six inches, six inches thick, and it will cost us $1,000 an inch. It'll take about 25 yards of it to put it in. I believe that because ours, is, if we went with that, it'd be 10,000 extra. Yeah. So we're so, going to go with the regular. Obviously, we're also <coughs> looking at the, at the wood chip mulch. Uh, I know the village currently uses wood chip mulch. The school district uses wood chip mulch throughout all of their play, playgrounds as well. So. And that's, um, a, and that's a special mulch, special chips. And they're very expensive. They're, they're not like the chips that we have. Yeah. It's a special chips and special grind. Yeah, we just spent three or four thousand just to redo ours. Yeah, it's a, it's a special grind able to it's tumbled to knock off the edges in the corners so and, you know splinters aren't present. So you've got that ordered through a vendor to the start of our project. Yeah. Would clients be able to piggyback on that? So it's For, all the same material then? You mean the, the mulch? Yeah. I don't know who that then no, we're just gonna go get it. Oh yeah that's something we're gonna do on because that was part of the problem. We took that out. We took that 10000 out and said, we'll provide that. And we'll just go so send a truck and get it. What's and involved with the site prep as far as machinery that you don't have that we have? Oh, the, site, the site prep involves uh, site clearing um, with, for the wood, wood chips. We would have to dig it down roughly 8 to 10 inches uh, for an area 32 by 45 for our swing set. I don't believe it honestly has to be that large. That's just what the manufacturer is recommending. Um, they could probably be a lot smaller than that. How long will that take? I'm sorry? How long will that take? How long will what take? Eh? Well, it just depends on how we do it. Once we get in bars, if we end up running the machine, we might do it. If we if we if we do it with a backhoe, it'll it'll be a few days, but we're gonna do ours and then that there, it'll probably be another it probably another couple of days because you guys, I didn't think we were going down that deep with ours, but I'd have to look. And, uh, um, but it's, you know, it, it'll be a few days to do it and get it right and get it cleaned up and get it ready. And then somebody's got to put the borders around. I don't know if you guys are planning on doing that. There's a border that has to go around them. Well, once it's done, we'll have to put in the board. Uh, right. You know, uh, right. pressure treated two by Right. And this is all, you know, in most of the stuff on the playgrounds that we're doing, we're not doing that work. You know, we're doing, we're doing some of the prep work. But they're doing the rest of it. So a couple more questions then. So you guys will build the swing. That's not you're gonna have a third party or yourself. Once once the site is cleared and the holes are drilled for the swing, yes, we'll take it from there. Nice. We'll, so you know, it sounds like for 95% of the way there. So this last five percent. Are you stuck with a specific timeline or can your timeline work with your dick in his site line? Our timeline expired a year ago. <laughs> So we're, we're, we're negotiating and working with a couple of grantors in trying to prevent us having to refund the grants. 
So well, I think we're trying to negotiate with an envoy. With a letter from the mayor explaining that you are waiting on us and our ability to do that prep work, would that help you? Likely not. It's Alliance. Uh, one of the grants that we're dealing with is from Alliance organization. Um, no, likely not. We can't use COVID is another reason. <laughs> I mean, it's, it's pretty clear that, that the COVID delayed us. I mean, we would have we would have been doing this project of our own at least a year ago. So if this point, put aside for a year, uh, we will keep working on negotiating with it. Um, I know your vendor. I had a conversation with your vendor, who's intending delivery and installation in July. If I can at least advise our grant tours uh, of a potential day that we're going to have a groundbreaking and that sort of thing, and moving forward. I think I can probably hold them off. Yeah. Based on conversations I've had with them. It, it looks like you looks like you and Chuck are sort of on the same page here. Um I mean, I, can't we get, why can't we get some what what are you gonna do? What are your expectations of things? What are you not gonna do so you know what you have to do? Who's gonna make that call? Because what I don't want to see happen is Chuck, do work, but the project might get completed because you thought he was going to do something when he thought you were going to do something. Because this, this kind of started from them doing everything to us doing everything, to then getting stalled out, and then now we're back again. And and uh, So I think in order for us to do what we need to do, that needs to be defined. So okay. if you have a clear expectation of us, we have a clear expectation of you, the project gets done. Probably the best way is for uh, a couple of us to meet with Chuck and work it out. Yeah. Work it out in writing. Yeah. Well, and, and my biggest concern was, and, and I'll tell you, I'm the one that slowed him down. My biggest thing is we've got to put ours in. Ours is $100,000, $97,000. We got to put ours in, and then part of what our grant is, someone has to put a road tour and someone has to make a path. And we kind of want to keep yours closer. If we did, then we could just continue to pass a little bit without a lot of work. It sounds good like you're flexible with that stuff. So if it can just be designed, you know, Agree upon between the two of you, I think. Yeah. Uh, in, in those ancillary things that are around them can probably be done if they're not done at the time. They could be done at some point, but at least it's not going to slow their money. Yeah. yeah and, and I think it's important that we look at this as one big project. Our playground, your swings tied together in one project. So I'll, I'll, leave, it, right. I'll leave it to you guys to work, Chuck and Jack. You're, you seem to be able to talk it over. Um, let's, let's see if we can get something done. And uh, if the Lions have a problem, Jack, let me know. I'd be happy to write a letter, call somebody, and explain the holdup that it's not your fault and see if we can help that way. So and we do we do have a print. I don't know if you've seen it. We do have a print where we try to add yours to the end of ours and then move it in there. But it was just until we get ours, we don't really know where it's what's going to happen. And that's why I said it's pretty tough for Jersey first. You know what I'm saying? And that's kind of where we are. You know, and I'm, I'm going to throw out this option. Um, you have, one of the things I did notice, your, your swing set um, at McCary Park uh, is about roughly the same size if you wanted to replace that with our swing set. It still keeps it in the village. It's not a community park. But it keeps it in the village, um, and it's just as accessible to the students or the children in wheelchairs because there is an accessible path back into the playground area, um, and there is parking right there on the street. That is a possibility if that wanted to be considered. That's an area that's already been cleared. The mulch is there, and that sort of thing. Yeah, that, that's the first I heard of that. We can look into that. Those are perfectly fine swing sets down there. But yeah, I would say we use them, and so that could be plan B. Yeah. We can't work out. But, okay. hey, but to echo what Bruce said, if you guys are on the same page, you don't have to call it mulch as you would have to call it and you've got the same aesthetic. Right. Yeah. Right. I think that's important, to, at least to me. Right. At least and, and I told Jack right now, manpower, we're just flat out with the sidewalks and all the other stuff that's going on. And it's, How about but it's a, if the vendor doesn't come through? And we consider that Mercer Park alternative to get the thing rolling. 
Yeah. 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 Ye
Chuck, uh, oh, is that right? uh, nine, nine dates and the hours of operation. Um, we'd like to leave the door open. We still have a couple of ends of dates. We may add one or two more uh, dates to the calendar. We're looking at potentially September 3rd. Uh, and we might have another opportunity on September 27th. But right now we're, we're with the nine. We want to get the nine approved. Um, Maureen came up with a, there was a question about the insurance. Uh, my current policy is in effect until May 24th. It's set for renewal on May 24th. Um, I will, at that time, I'll provide insurance. I mean, the, my insurance is basically written right off of your contract, the limits that I have. So, um, but that won't, the new policy won't be in place until May 24th. It's just- All of these dates are subsequent to May 24th. Pardon me? All of these dates are after the 24th. Correct. So the best we could do is approve it contingent, contingent upon the policy change. Right, but I, I, if it, I, I can't afford to have it hold up the paperwork. Right. There's yeah. a couple of letters that we need. I need to get those as soon as we can. Um, the only other comment on the insurance is um, the workers' comp. Pre-COVID, we were subcontracting 80% of our labor. Post-COVID, we're subcontracting 100% of our labor. Um, I'd like to get that waived and submit to you guys uh, a certificate of exemption uh, that I've done it with a couple of other entities um, uh, because our stations do their own payroll. Our bartenders are coming from Westcott Theater, that's going through Westcott Theater payroll. Our security is always going through Westcott events, that goes through their payroll. So if that could be considered and just tell me yes or no by May 24th. All right, we, we, we have a meeting in two weeks. We can address that issue. Okay. All right. We'll take care of this. questions for me. Okay. Very good. Um, can I get a motion to approve waiver? Hold on. Oh. You guys can do the motion before. This had nothing to do. Just for the, I know you have the first planned. Yeah. Did you have anything planned or that might come into effect for July 2nd? No. The only dates that may come into play besides the nine you know about now, are the 3rd of September and the 27th of right now. Perfect, thank you. And, okay. And Bob, so you fire next meeting, could you give us an opinion on that workers' comp thing? Yeah. Okay, well, thanks. All right, thank you. All right. Can I get a motion to approve waivers of the open container law for the following creative concert events on Paper Mill Island, Friday, June 17th from 6 to 11 p.m.? Wednesday, June 29th from 5 to 10 p.m., Friday, July 1st from 6 to 11 p.m., Friday, July 8th from 6 to 11 p.m., Saturday, July 23rd, 6 to 11 p.m., Saturday, July 30th, 6 to 11 p.m., Friday, August 5th, 6 to 11 p.m., Thursday, August 11th, 5 to 10 p.m., and Friday, September 2nd from 6 to 11 p.m., contingent on proof of insurance before the first date. Moved. Second. Any other discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Carried. Here you go. Thanks, Chuck. Um, so we move that up. Now we're at uh, trustees comments. Eric. I have nothing. I'll stick to the agenda. All the way up. Okay. Ruth Seiko. I'll stick with the agenda. All right. Bruce? Agenda's fine. Megan? Mike Shepard? I'll be with this one. The agenda's fine. All right. And Nate Collins? Uh, I'm, I'm the bad guy. Um, just wanted to uh, remind the citizens to go out and vote for the Beeville Central School District Board of Education election on May 17th. There are three seats up for vote, and the budget for vote proposed those to vote on. Uh, so please go out and support your school and the students with its vote. And so I could add to May, May 11th, there's a candidate's forum where you can go try to figure out what they're supporting. Yeah. 
Very good. Thanks. Thanks for that reminder. Uh, got uh, mayor's comments. Uh, to remind people that you can still purchase the hanging flower baskets that go up around the village. Um, if you go on the village website or the village Facebook site, the form, and it's $50 a basket and you can dedicate it to, you know, a family member, or a, a friend, whatever. Uh, and, and there's nothing looks better on Memorial Day than our flags flying and our plants hanging on the, on the poles. Um, so this is for the public to know that they can still take part. Um, just remind people that the parade is May 30th at 10 a.m. The board is encouraged to participate. Um, I hope all of you can march. Uh, I'm sure not all of you will make it, but um, it, we haven't had a parade in a couple of years. If we can get some of our board members out there, um, I know Lysander is going to have a pretty good turnout. Uh, not that we're competing, but uh, it would be nice to have a show of, of uh, village uh, board members for the public to see. And it's a nice chance to wave to people. And, and uh, usually very people are very appreciative. So, um, again, it's 10 a.m. on the 30th. Um, we, uh, I think the sidewalks look great before Chuck even mentions them. Uh, the one by the Grace Church, you know, long overdue. We know that. And then the ones going up East Genesee Street to uh, Aspen Springs uh, look terrific. Uh, we didn't have to cut any trees down to get the sidewalks in. And I think that area in front of Kinney's is part of our Main Street project looking dynamite. So, you know, thanks, Chuck, to you and all your guys for everything. That you I, my house is falling apart. Um, I know that our guys had a lot to do with the restoration along the side of the sidewalks and, and stuff like that. And, and, uh, they always do a great job. So, um, I know, I don't know if Bob and I had talked the other day a little further about the canal property that we, what did we want to do a lease? Do we want to do a use permit? Um, uh, Bob has talked with the canal people. Uh, it looks like the use permit is probably the best way to go. Um, as far as, being flexible and also we can, we can probably combine all the pro properties that we like to use and at a lower fee than we're paying now. So, uh, Bob, if you have anything to add to that, feel free. No, just the fact that the discussions are, are going on with uh, the, uh, uh, the director in Albany and also the, the individual in the uh, the Central New York office of Syracuse that handles uh, the permits. So um, they they agree that what they would like to do is to get everything, the, the several parcels that we want to get involved with <clears throat> all under one one uh, permit so that we can kind of get more organized with it. And this will allow us to do various things, construct some things on the site, that sort of thing. So I, I think it's, it's a good step moving forward. Yeah, I, I appreciate the work you've done on that, Bob. Thank you. Um, May 21st is the village-wide garage sale. If anybody wants to participate, um, it would be smart to contact the Chamber of Commerce because they're going to take everybody who contacts them, put them in a list, and then anybody who wants to take part can get that list. And if there's nobody on a certain street, they don't have to waste their time. They go right to the streets that got people. So if you're going to be selling something, you certainly want people to come to your street. So register with the chamber and uh, hopefully last year it went very well and hopefully it'll be bigger this year. And we are working. Um, I, I can't give you a lot of specifics, but we are working on farmer's market. A couple people uh, looking into uh, if they've never done it before. So they're trying to find out what some of the complications might be and what the details are. So hopefully before too long, we'll have news of a farmer's market being opening up in the village. Um, it seems like it, when that's there, it's, it's always been a good thing. So looking forward to that. Okay, we'll move on to department heads. We'll start with our attorney, Bob. Uh, I'll stick with the agenda. 
Okay, our village clerk, Mo. I just wanted to mention that it uh, is the season. If anyone's interested in reserving a pavilion for an event, um, just give us a call or stop by the village hall uh, and we'll give you an application. The rates have changed a little for village residents can reserve a pavilion for a $30 fee while non-residents will be charged a $55 fee. There's still a uh, security deposit that will be refundable after your event. Reservations are starting to pick up, so you know your date, give us a call. Very good. Thanks, Mo. And I, I w did want to let people know that this week is is um, Municipal Clerk Week, and uh, I dropped off some goodies this morning for the uh, or actually last night for the clerks. Um, and those of you who who deal with the clerks at all know that they are the backbone of our operation. We would be lost without all of our clerks, whether it be at the dispatch for the police department, the courts, uh, certainly the village offices. Um, you know, you've got Louise up at the DPW and we have people over at, at Canton Woods and uh, we are blessed with great people and they make the rest of us look good. So move on to the treasurer, Mark Baker. Nothing uh, unless there's questions. Very good. Thank you, Mark. Uh, Code officer, Greg. Um, I'll stick with the agenda. Okay. Um, senior Center, Ruth Troy. Um, well, May is one of my favorite months because May is Older Americans Month. Just, so um, the theme for this year is Age My Way, and the focus is on aging in place and remaining independent. And that is directly in line with Canton Woods' mission and what we do, which is helping seniors remain active and engaged in the community. So just want to let folks, we're open Monday through Friday doing our full range of programs and activities. So come on down and see what's going on at your senior center. I did take this month as an opportunity to address both town boards this week and um, give them some updated information on the senior center and what's going on right now, just so this board's aware of that. Um, a couple of things, our concert series has started. The first concert will be May 16th at 2.30. That's George Leha. Um, that whole schedule is posted on all the municipal websites and on the village Facebook page. Thank you, <coughs> our clerk's office. Thank you for that. And also we have our health and wellness event on May 18th from one to three. Um, we haven't had it for two years, so we're that's back on track. So there'll be a lot of people with information there, helpful information, and of course the lovely giveaway takeaways that people enjoy. So come on down on May 18th. And also on the sidewalks, uh, I want to thank the DPW and Chuck as well. The sidewalk work has been done in front of the senior center, so we are no longer worried about a fall risk, and um, that's looking great. So thank you for that. And that's it, unless anybody has any questions. I did see your video today, the new video, uh, and uh, for the rest of you who haven't seen it, um, Pac B interviewed Ruth and Donna about the center and about Meals on Wheels, and. Uh, it's rather astounding when you think of the, the range of events that go on at the senior center, Monday through Friday. I mean, if you take a look at the calendar, there's six, seven, eight events every day. I mean, some of them are pinochle, some of them are bridge, you know, they're not huge events, but, but there's something going on all the time. And I, I watched the video. It starts out with, um, with the drum beating on the, uh, what, do you, what do you call it? Are you ball drumming? Yes, and it's they, they play you know fairly pop music and everybody's drumming and the and the, the gal who runs it, she is a stitch. I mean, she gets those people working, and you can see the smiles on everybody's faces. and And my thought as I watched that was, if we didn't have a senior center, where would all those people be? And most likely, they would be sitting in a chair, in propped up in front of a television in their apartment or their home, doing nothing. Instead, they're out, they're getting activity, they're interacting with other people, they're keeping their minds fresh. Um, I mean, Ruth knows I'm a huge fan of the center and the seniors, and um, I, the, this just highlighted why. Um, 
what it does for our seniors. People that are older, that live in the village of Baldwinsville, that are healthy like most of us, that are seniors, not all of our board is seniors for sure. Um, but there's people that, that are alone, that don't have activities. What we find, what I think I see is there's a lot of people who move to town because this is where a son or a daughter lives. And so they move to St. Mary's, they move to Conifer, and now they're just sitting there doing nothing. And somebody happens to mention Canton Woods, they go over, they, they meet friends and their life changes. Or they were here and their, their spouse has died. Now they're alone. Their kids have moved away. I, I just, I know I'm kind of going on and on about it, but, but to me, um, it's hard to, when I, th I realize I'm older, when you talk about Older Americans Month, I'm, I'm one of them, um, but I'm fortunate that I'm, I have enough activity in my life that I, I don't have time to go to the senior center a lot of times. But for those who are alone and have nothing but time, it's just awesome. And I, I know Ruth, Ruth and Joan do a great job. Uh, Nancy did a great job all during the COVID, uh, you know, all the programs they run. Um, it's our place is a great example to celebrate older Americans month. So hats off to Ruth and the crew at senior center. And thank you for all you do. Public works, Chuck. Uh, we had our walkthrough this week with the insurance company for the workman's comp. It went very well. She went through, um, majority of our buildings. Uh, we didn't have any, any issues. Um, a couple of little things, but nothing, nothing, uh, like we have had in the past. Um, so that we were happy to see that, uh, no brush this coming week. You know, we, we've been on brush since just since early spring. Uh, we take a week off now. Just a, just a quick reminder for people, the brush pickup is for yard waste. Um, we had one resident that was pretty upset because she had cut a big tree down and she had like three truckloads out there. And when we told her that, you know, that's not what the program is, we could put a park truck there. She said, okay, and then a the truck come over. And she said, I, I don't want that, it's too big. So she ended up getting away, you know, but that's, the program isn't for big, big loads. You know, when we have storms, we'll pick some of the bigger stuff up. But for the most part, you know, that's just not the program. Um, the sidewalks, I know um, just a quick thing on the sidewalks. I want to thank Greg for the help that he did with us on the sidewalks. He did a lot of the notifications for people on, uh, on, uh, on East Genesee up by Curtis. Um, the, the, as we know, the contract we got in there held some prices for the last couple of years. He was just fantastic. He went through very quick. They do a great job. Um, I didn't dream it'd get done as quick as it did. Actually, they're a little tough to keep up with. Um, they're pretty much done. Um, the East Genesee Street by, by um, across the diner there. Uh, we need to put some benches in and do a little bit of the grass work there. Uh, our portion's almost done. We've got a couple other things in the contract to see if we can, can do that, but that, that came out very well. The East Genesee by Curtis, it's very difficult working up there. Um, we're in there now. I think we did seven driveways today. We do the, the we, part of our, our part is that we do the driveway, we catch the driveways, and then we get back in with topsoil. Um, the people have been very patient up there. Uh, the problem we're having with topsoil right now, we can't get it. It's just too early in the year. But uh, up by the Grace Pistol or by the church up there, um, we get up and did a lot of that with some of the older stuff that we had. Um, but but it, it's, gone, it's gone pretty well. Uh, Mercer Community Park, the bathrooms are open as of today. Um, we got those open and the police are going to lock them at night for us. We thank them for that. Uh, the flags are going up the 16th, the ones that they're doing on the polls. We work with the uh, um, with American Legion on that. that that's going to happen the 16th. The Little League Field, just so we know, there's been some issues over there with the with the septic over there and it's plugged up a bunch of times and a lot of it is what's getting put in there, but we're going to go over and try to make a change in some of the piping. We can't control what gets put in there, but when they get plugged up, it's just a busy place over there. And uh, so Corey's been over there uh, with the water department and uh, we've got a lot of that piping exposed and we're going to make a change over there and see if that helps out a little bit. So other than that, was just questions. I'm good. No questions? Okay. We'll move on to the police department. Chief Leffenchek. 
<laughs> You're stuck with uh, Lieutenant Mike Lockwood. Oh, I'm sorry. Okay. How are you, Mayor? Good. Um, I just want to thank uh, the Onondaga County Sheriff's Department dive team, especially uh, Deputy Soleil, who heads up that unit. Um, we had a fisherman on Sunday uh, report to our department that he believed he found on um, his sonar a uh, possible vehicle that was in the water off the uh, boat ramp at Community Park. Um, I ended up contacting uh, Deputy Soleil. Uh, they were in the mor water Tuesday morning and they recovered the vehicle. Um, we ended up uh, getting it removed and it ended up being a stolen vehicle from like 2000. 15, I believe it was. So, but we appreciate all their expertise and help with uh, resolving this issue. And that's really it from us. Very good. Thank you, Lieutenant. Um, we'll move on to pending busy business. Item A Can I get a motion approving a proposed local law three to enact section 345 45 of the village code? which would allow the construction of permanent or temporary handicap ramps in any yard provided they are 10 feet from the front lot line and five feet from the side lot line or the rear yard upon the issuance of a permit, building permit from the code office. I'll make a motion with comment. Second. Okay. I want to know people's attention that uh, Zoning Board Chairman James Cephalato really kind of pushed this. Sorry, I'll start over again. <laughs> Zoning Board of Appeal, Appeals, uh, James Chairman James Cephalato really pushed this forward. This is intended to make it easier for citizens who are find themselves in a situation where they would need a handicap ramp to be able to have this done and not have to go in front of the board for this kind of procedures. So that's the purpose of this. Right. I think it's a great idea. Um, and it make, making it easy, easier is one of our goals whenever we can. So any other comments? I, I just want to say, you know, it goes along with uh, some comments that Ruth made. It goes along with aging in place, uh, allowing people to uh, be able to stay in their homes. Um, and normally people that need this type of access to their own home, They've either gone through a tra tragic event or they are becoming disabled due to age and need access to their own home. And it's a real hardship for them to have to come in front of a board to explain to that board that they need to have access to their own home. So it's, it's, we've had a couple that have had uh, children that were involved in car accidents and, you know, the, the parents are here trying to get they just want to get their child into the home. So we felt that this was just a, uh, a real need for our community to have, an, uh, you know, have them able to uh, do this easier. That's great. Thank you, Greg. All right, we have a motion and a second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Carried. All righty. <laughs> Item B, can I get a motion approving the proposed local law four to repeal and restate chapter 292 of the village code to institute particular regulations regarding defective sidewalks and to allow the superintendent of public works or the code enforcement officer to order such repairs or replacements and enforce the regulations which are adopted. Can I get that motion? Thank you. Any discussion? I have a quick question. Go ahead. This happens. Are these people capable of being being part of the grant if it's not in a defined grant area for that year? And what happens <laughs> after we ex are done with sidewalk projects in the village and something like this happens? My concern is hitting somebody with a 30 day notice that they need to replace a $25 dollar sidewalk. And, and then I see punitive stuff in here after 30 days. What what can somebody do if they don't have that disposable income? Well, the, the adjacent property owners are responsible for the maintenance of the existing sidewalks. Um, sidewalks that are under the, uh, you know, the programs, you know, obviously the village <coughs> and the property owners split the costs of those new sidewalks. These are for repairs that need to be completed 
down the road once those sidewalks are either replaced or once a sidewalk becomes defective, you know, whether someone's driven over it, whether the uh, uh, it's deteriorated from either, either salt or just, you know, normal weathering or whether uh, roots have lifted a section and causing a trip hazard. Um, what we were looking for is we've had situations in the past where we have already replaced sidewalks. The sidewalks, you know, 10, 12 years ago are now starting to need some maintenance. And we've had issues with uh, the ability to have those repaired in a timely manner. And these are public thoroughfares and you know, public safety being the main concern. Uh, we wanted a mechanism to expedite those repairs. If, if the adjacent property owner who was responsible neglected or refused to make those repairs. Uh, not, not unlike when we have to mow a property or clean up trash on a property. So, so potentially they could end up fitting the whole bill with a 30 day notice that, that something's going down. I mean, this isn't even something that, that, that we're have a problem if we're splitting the cost or even an option to put it on your tax roll for and split it up in, in, over the course of three years. This is a one time. Okay. Usually we're not talking about an entire length of sidewalk. We're talking maybe a slab or two. I mean, that, that's just the intent. I mean, we're not usually talking, like I said, about an entire front yard. You know, these are usually individual repairs. I, I personally would like to see more discussion on something to lessen the potential of, you know, a fixed income retired couple living on Curtis Ave who had their sidewalk replaced in one of the first go rounds and I mean, just I guess the argument means that we, is that the sidewalk must be repaired because it is a public third. I don't disagree. With that. So we need to, you know, we, uh, uh, you know, obviously the board would need to discuss some kind of if there's another mechanism that they'd like to have, or or even a, I mean, in normal normal code violations are a 30 day notice. Uh, that's probably why we. You know, we have the 30 days here is because that's the, the normal notice that I'm required to give someone uh, to repair certain items. What happens on day 31? That's where, you know, the superintendent and I would have to look at hiring the work to be done. I was thinking that's where it's going to end up at the time. Say, sorry, but you've got to replace this 20 foot section of sidewalk and there agree it needs to be replaced with their will get an estimate and it's $1,200. They don't have $1,200. Right. It's going to behoove them to sit back, let 30 days expire, put the burden on you to get it fixed. They don't pay that bill. You get that on taxes. And, and that's the only way it would go on taxes. Well, that's, if they fixed it, so our I, bill's not going to, you know, that's exactly. their vendor's not going to give it to us to right. pay. So it's going to buy them time, and we're going to end up with it in our laps anyway. Right, and that's that's how um, the property cleanups and lawn mowings normally happen. Because, well, with those, you're normally dealing with lawn mowing, especially. You're normally dealing with a uh, property that's either bank owned or abandoned, and the invoices never get paid, so they usually get placed on the taxes. Uh, this is, for the most part, the property owners made the repairs. We did have one individual property owner that took several months to make the repairs. My only alternative is to bring them in front of a judge. And then the judge cannot force them to repair the sidewalk. They can only issue the fine unless we have a, a civil uh, order. Which for somebody who can't afford the fine is just- So now, right, so now we've just, we've upped the fees by, you know, the legal fees that are involved with bringing them into uh, in front of the judge. So, the the real mechanism here is to allow the village to make the repairs and bill it to the property owner. Yeah. If they didn't pay, yes. right? And it would probably just go for one year. Which at least it's a year to save money, not thirty days. Wow. Mm -hmm. I think it's not lost, but I understand. Okay. Any other questions? To your, to, to your point, um, and it, I don't know if there's some way we could do some sort of program so it could help them favor some of some of the biggest issues that we have is 
And the, and the difficult ones to talk to people about is the village trees that get in the sidewalk and, and raise them. And then they have to, you have to tell them, you've got to take that out, we'll grind the tree and put it back in again. And I don't know, if, you know, I know we have a program maybe in the years to come, they could have a rolling program to help people with some of those things. But I know exactly what you're saying. And it's, diff it's difficult for me to tell people to do that, especially especially with the, the tree issue. But um, it's also difficult in Greg's case to get it done. So that's kind of how that's kind of how it goes. Something like you've got 30 days to make the fix on your own, find it cheaper. We make it where it's, there's an incentive for them to do it on their own to find it cheaper. And if not, maybe we come up with a plan where if we do have to do it and incur the cost, that there's some kind of monetary uh, value to us for doing that, but allowing them to spread it out. I'm, I'm guessing from. It's a tough one. Sorry. I mean, usually, it's not a whole lot of sidewalk, it's like one square. Or a truck has gone over it and busted a corner of it, and you're just replacing that one square, which isn't isn't you know I mean I don't know, hundred dollars or something, to do something like that. You know, I, I'm not sure what the cost would be, but it's not. I don't think it would break you. Uh, That's what it is today, though. You're thinking, I mean, this, these are pristine sidewalks we put in, and eventually they will deteriorate. And in essence, they could deteriorate in a pretty similar fashion where. Now, instead of replacing one or two squares, it's the whole surface is deteriorated. One issue I kind of have with it is though, the way it's written is it's pretty, uh, it's, there's a lot of interpretation, I feel like, where you can interpret how much is an effective sidewalk. I don't know if we can clean up that language at all either. Some of it seems pretty good, but there's some interpretation left there. <coughs> How much of a missing portion of a surface is, you know, considered a bad sidewalk? You know, how much of a tilt? And some of the prop, you know, some of the properties we have tilt on the sidewalks just because of how the contour of the land is too when they put it in. So, I have I have a little concerns with that aspect of, of the law. It's, it's going to be left up to interpretation of who defines what a defective sidewalk really is. And, and Greg might define it one way, and the guy. 30 years down the road is going to define it in a different way. And some of that is existing language as well, uh, yeah. where it defines what a defective sidewalk is. The The only portion that we were looking to modify or to add was the ability for the village to make those repairs when the adjacent property owner neglected to, uh, refused to, or, you know, like an abandoned property. No, I realize some of the language is already in. Oh, no, I'm just... You know, if we could clean it all up at once, just kind of makes it a little easier. That way people know, hey, this is this is what constitutes what's defective and what's not. And owners know then, hey, you've got a defective sidewalk. Yeah, I mean, basically what we're saying is that we trust our code officer or our, or our DPW superintendent to make that judgment. Somebody's got to make it. Um, you know, we're not going to bring in some urban sidewalk specialist to come in and look at it. our people. Greg knows what's deficient and what isn't as far as the sidewalks concerned. And Chuck certainly knows, um, you know, if there's a little corner broken off or something, probably not going to make somebody replace it. But if the whole thing is lifted or sinking or, um, you know, you, you have to think about older people walking down the sidewalk tripping on it or little kids walking down and tripping on it. And ultimately at some point, somebody has to, has to be in a position of making that judgment. I think, I mean, I think as municipal leaders, we, that's why we have a code officer and send him to training. I mean, he's, we, that's why we have a superintendent who's been at the job for 35 years who can, can look at a sidewalk and say, that's not a problem. That'll, that'll go another few years before we got to worry about it. And look at another one and say, this is going to be a problem in, in a month or two. And we, we better take care of it before the winter comes and it really gets bad. Um, 
you know, I, I know it's, I know it's subjective, but that's, you know, that's just, that's the way it's been. It's the way it was before when, when we went through and replaced, some people had sidewalks, didn't need the whole thing replaced. We just replaced two squares out of the whole thing. And because Steve D'Arcangelo made a judgment that those two were deficient, the rest of it was fine. And we trusted Steve's judgment. Um, so I, I understand what you're saying, Eric, and, and it's it's a good point. But but I think again, these are our experts. You know, they've been at this for more than a week or two, and uh, I'm pretty confident when they tell me we got a problem with something that we got a problem. I don't know how the rest of the board feels, but um, as far as that part of the discussion, um, I, have, I have a comment. Um, is there a way that we could possibly educate uh, the, uh, the villagers who live on adjacent properties on sidewalks to be able to at least inform them that, you know, for example, I know we have a lot of aging community, but we also have a lot of newcomers that are coming into the village for their first home and they don't really know a lot about the about that sidewalk situation and just have them so that they, if they need to, they can possibly have $2,500 or something like that set aside for it on a rainy day type of, you know, type of front. And so that they could know, you know, every once in a while, take a look at the sidewalk, every once in a while, take a look at the sidewalk, and then just, you know, prepare themselves for it. I mean, that's, that's a little bit of something that we could remedy, I would imagine, and help the public with this proposal. We do have a newsletter. I don't know if the sidewalk is included in the newsletter, but it could be. And we could do a better job probably of publicizing the newsletter to you know, ask real estate agents when you sell property, could you make sure that people are aware that the village has a newsletter that tells you when yard waste pickup comes around and what can be included? Um, snow removal on sidewalks, you, know, you own the property, you're required to keep the sidewalk clear. Uh, all the things that a homeowner would need to know re relative to being in the village, um, if we could get the newsletter into their hands uh, via real estate people, um, if anybody comes down to sign up for new water, uh, you know, get their water hooked up. Um, it is, I believe the newsletter is listed on the bottom of your water bill, but it would, it would be a chance for somebody to sit, tell them, oh, and just so you know, Here's a site for the newsletter that will explain a lot of what your responsibilities are as a homeowner. I think that's a great idea, Nate. We just probably got to do a better job of uh, making people aware that we do have something like that. When, when someone calls for a new water service or we know that they are purchasing a home, we do send them a newsletter. Oh, okay. Well, their information on the sidewalk, I don't believe it's in there, but, you know, that would be a whole... Little write-off that would have to be added, but we do give newsletters. If, if you're going to do that and add things, one other item that should be in there is the obligation of a homeowner who has a granted easement on their property not to um, fill it in, not to construct any any um, structures that will block it, because that's caused in the village a substantial amount of water damage um, because those those easements. <coughs> are set to to allow uh, stormwater uh, flow uh, to be unimpeded. But if, if, they, if people fill it in because they don't like that little ditch in their backyard, even though it's in an easement, or they put some uh, structures up, now all of a sudden their next door neighbor's uh, uh, cellar floods or, or their left floods and they wonder why. So that would be another item to put in if we're going to do that sort of thing. Good idea. Thank you, Bob. I don't disagree with the mayor about you guys being able to determine what is and what isn't a bad sidewalk. I agree with you 100%. Do we have the ability to shy of issuing them a 30 day notice? Because, again, with like all of your experience, you could probably call it a year before or six months before. Can we at least send a courtesy letter that says your sidewalk is, is being reviewed for safety purposes, and potential replacement? Just to give them some more heads up. Yeah, I can do that. I mean, it's a possibility. I mean, some of these items, 
may happen a little, you know, quicker than that. Um, it just depends, but even three months to somebody. Yeah. Right. I don't know. For how long has it been? Just having a program like you were talking about you know, earlier. I just, I, I think that, I, I agree with you one percent on that. I don't know that that's going to happen quick enough for us to act on this because I agree with a lot of this. It's just how it's going to turn out. So. I think Speaking for myself, I would be in favor of this, but I think there's more work to be done on the back end well, to help with the builders. Right. Just to ask the board, um, you know, we've put in sidewalks now for what, 12 years? About that, yeah. Yeah. So, say that first sidewalk program gets to be 20 years old. I'm just putting a round number out, but not that it matters. Um, does the village? want to look at having you know starting over with a sidewalk program do we have to i mean is that something that the village needs to I, for for what i've done you know for for what i have had to notify people on they're just one-offs on these properties you know there'll be one slab it's either got a you know a split out of it where you can catch your your foot in it or your the side might be broken off because they drove over it. Um, so when you're walking along it, you may roll an ankle and fall. Um, these are, or they're, or they're, you know, you've got a slab that's this much higher than another slab. Um, so you've got like just these one-off issues. I'm not, I have not seen yet, other than the program sidewalks where you've got, you know, an entire property. So when you're looking at the sidewalk program, those are gonna age out. So maybe we could come up with something as a group that is shy of a complete replacement, but similar to the current plan where there's not necessarily shared a 50-50 like the plan, like this one is, but the time portion of it. Mm -hmm. As whether it's a slab, four slabs, or a whole thing, it creates a program that would allow them to go three years on the tax. Homeowner responsibility for the sidewalk is not a new concept. It, it's been that way forever. What this does is allows the village to tell somebody you've got to fix it, as opposed to saying, we'd like you to fix it. And then they ignore it. Good, good point, Bruce. Good point. But if it's, like I said, I agree with you. I agree with what you're saying, though, that when you come into these situations where you've got stretches of sidewalk that need to replace, you know, maybe there's another, you know, mechanism that we we use for those extenuating circumstances. Well, the, the law itself also provides that the superintendent can extend time limits uh, for good cause, uh, so that that gives that gives the you know, village the ability to work something out. Okay. Thanks, Okay. I, I would still like to see the language cleaned up. <laughs> you, there's nothing about safety at all in this. And we've been talking about safety. So, I mean, if we could put some language that kind of lays that out, the tripping hat, you know, your sidewalk is defective because of it's a tripping hazard or something. Nothing like that's in there. That, uh, that a wheelchair can't, you know, roll over the sidewalk. I mean, something like that would get it. It just takes out that gray area. And it puts it there a little more black and white about what we expect the sidewalk to be and, and what makes a bad sidewalk. Okay. Very good. We had great discussion. Uh, we've got a motion in a second. Um, we can vote if you want to change things. You can vote no, and we can go back to the drawing board or or we can go ahead and do it and, and trust that uh, the people making these decisions will be listening to what you're saying. Yeah. We have a motion and a second. All in favor? Aye. Opposed? Aye. Opposed? Aye. Carried. It's great discussion though. I don't think there's anything wrong with having that kind of discussion. Uh, and I think we might have it on the next one too. Um, and get a motion approving the proposed local law five to provide for the regulation of the seasonal sale of food from fixed outdoor locations by use of a temporary or movable structure or use of a motor vehicle. Thank you. 
Do we get a second? <clears throat> yeah, Megan, second. Okay. Um, discussion. There's a discussion of the stuff Eric mentioned that Mike Johnson brought up. It seemed to me there were some valid criminal background checks for people working at the Seems like we're overreaching. Yeah, can you say it? No, it's the first I even okay. heard about the issue. I don't know if you had any discussion with Mike, but. Well, uh, you know, normally the language, I mean, we do background checks for individuals that are going from door to door, which is completely understandable. And, you know, him, you know, bringing this up, it, you know, I've got, uh, well, sort of family that has a food truck. And, uh, yeah, I'm thinking they may have younger individuals working with them. You're talking about a family working in a food truck. Um, I'm not sure that that's not a valid point. You know, do we need to be, you know, Doing that for someone that's not for somebody working in the restaurant. That's what I'm saying. It's, it's such a similar situation that you know we're not doing that for every other business in the village. Why are we doing it for the ones that are still? These are not people going door to door, you know, soliciting. Right. These are people in public space um, doing, you know, work. Um, um, to speak to the inspections, I would agree that you know these trucks should not be inspected every time they show up in the village but they are required under the uniform code, the fire code, to be inspected by the authority having jurisdiction, which is my office. Um, so to make sure that they are compliant with, you know, not just the health code, but that they're compliant with the health code regarding the, you know, gas tanks that they use, uh, you know, cooking equipment, um, exhaust. Uh, so, so what would you do, Greg? How would you, do, how would you, handle that if there's well, going to be 25 different fire you know food trucks in the village at some point you, you're not going to go out in the neighborhoods and even if you just inspect it once well they're going to be required to register their business at the time of registration they would need to bring that vehicle or make it accessible for inspection i would think okay yeah, we're not talking about you know they should not have a Every time they pull up in the village, um, shouldn't require an inspection. Uh, every time someone opens a restaurant door, they don't require an inspection. Right. Um, you know, so, but the permit. They do at that initial opening. At the initial open, opening, 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 right. They do require the inspection, yeah. and they require inspections every every year, every three years, depending on the size of the establishment. So, um, you know, those periodic inspections would be required under the, under the building code, um, whether or not we have this uh, permit, but as a part of the permit, they would be required to have their inspection at that time. And for events, would the promoter have to what, know if it's their first time on the island? You know, I just um, wonder what, how we would regulate that. Right. Events that did not have food trucks when they had a tent in the month, they had to be inspected in terms of was there a gas tank anchored security? <coughs> there, there's inspections involved there. Right. So I would follow that just because now they're in a food truck, they still would have to undergo that inspection for an event. And the code officer did those inspections? I don't know. I was at Beaver Lake. It was the fire, not that county fire department. Right now it's required. Yeah. Under the 2020 code, it's required. Um, under the fire code. We had not adopted a, this language yet. Now the language is in the new 2022 code that we're adopting to have us inspect these vehicles. So, um, oh, it's, yeah, it's absolutely a requirement now for, for my office to inspect these when they're in the village. So whether it's a food truck rodeo or, or not, you know, these, we're gonna have to get those vehicles inspected. I have, I have one question. Is there a redundancy in what you would do from your review versus what a health department would do? Not exactly. Okay, so they're not going to inspect for things like you just mentioned. Right. Yeah, they're not looking at specific. So they're, they're absolutely, yeah, there is some overlap. Um, you know, I can go into certain sanitary issues, um, but I'm looking at, uh, you know, ventilation. Uh, the gas tanks, you know, how they're secured, how they're piped, um, the size, you know, you only allow a certain size on, on trucks. Um, 
I mean, that's that's a lot of it's under the fire code. So the cooking equipment, making sure that it's um, clean. Probably you know. hopefully get the hand washing stations. <laughs> <laughs> right. Is this, is this something you, the, uh, is this item something you think we should table to the next meeting as far as the uh, criminal investigations and background checks and that kind of stuff? I mean, do we, or do we want to strike that and, and proceed with the rest of it? Or what, uh, what do you think? I just wanted to piggyback on Eric's thing. So basically, say, for example, a family's on the taco truck. Uh, are we going to have to have some sort of identification, photograph identification for, say, a 12 or 13 year old that's just handing out the, the food or collecting the money in the food truck as well, or no? I think that's the argument that the uh, the code seems to, you know, go too far as so far as. Why don't, why don't we have Eric again read those issues one by one and we can we decide? On the one by one issue, whether we want to exclude them or include them. And I know we can take them on. These are not my issues. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you brought it up there. <laughs> if we have anything you could do, right? Because some of this may need to be modernized. And so if we uh, talk about the issues um, that, uh, that are here, uh, the next question is, I guess, um, you know, needing identification of some kind of people that are working. You do have some issues about uh, people who are working, actually, actually working on a truck uh, 11 years old. Is, is that a problem? Uh, got requirements in New York as to the age of uh, certain people who will be able to, to uh, work in a business. I think maybe it's a good, you know, to table this, you know, till the next meeting so that, you know, you and I can get together and yeah. discuss these uh, these options and, and get it out to the board again. All right. Um, do we need a, do we need to make a motion for that, Mo? To table? Yes, motion Only motion to table it. I'll second it. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Eric, can you get that information to Byron? Yeah. Right. So they must be there. Yeah, I can pull over there. And that's, I mean, yeah, I've seen all this. Okay, very good. We'll move on to new business. So thanks, everybody, for the, for the input. That's how you make good laws by talking about them. All right, new business item B. Can I get a motion to declare the following as surplus at Canton Woods Senior Center? 18 window blinds. All in favor? I think the model Bob sent to the Everybody vote. Yeah. Um, item C. Get a motion to accept the following gifts from Canton Woods Inc. 501 C board, 18 new window blinds, and a Dayton walk behind floor scrubber. Make a motion. Discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Carried. Item D, can I get a motion to appoint Michelle Hamilton as a seasonal laborer at a rate of $17 an hour in the Parks Department with an effective date to be determined by the Superintendent of Public Works? Motion. Second. Now, this is um, the first of hopefully two people who will work as part of our flower brigade, planting flowers, weeding flower beds, and that type of stuff. All right, we have a motion and a second. All in favor? Let me second for that. What's that? I was asking about watering. And, and so we have separate persons who are going to do that. Yes. Yep. All right. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Carry. Item E, can I get a motion to set a bid date of Tuesday, June 14th, 2022 at 2 p.m. for the Tannery Creek box culvert replacement? and stream debris and sediment removal project. Second. Questions or discussion? This is, if there's, 
This is just for, uh, uh, we're ordering the, the culvert itself. This is separate from that. And uh, we had a price and the engineer thought it was a little high, so they're gonna send it out to bed. And then this portion is pretty much clearing, clearing the big trees and stuff out of there. I think you might get a better price by bidding it up. I have a question on when I read the specs of the bid. I don't want to hold up the vote because of that. So I talked about removing soil to increase an area for water impoundment. There's there's a couple of spots there, and, and, and they've been in contact with DEC. But there's one spot uh, by United Street where it's all filled in, and we need to dig a little bit of that out, and then and then down further where it's curved out where it's not supposed to be. They want to move some of that. Uh, it's just because we're excavating a yard or something. No, it's, and, and, and we're limited about how much we can clean, but we're trying to, um, they're right there on, on the United Street. It's like halfway up the culvert. And we want to take a part of that out and a part on the other side of Warner. Will we go on both sides of the United Street or just downstream? No, nope, just downstream. No, we don't want to go to the other side. Okay. <laughs> Any other questions? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Carried. Uh, item F, any good discussion, possible action in regard to setting a public <laughs> meeting for June 2nd, 2022 at 7.30 p.m. to consider a local law authorizing the village board and other village public bodies to use video conferencing technology to participate in public meetings based on the new um, budget item Put out by the state. Move. Discussion? Oh. All in favor? Aye. Opposed? Carried. Any other business we need to discuss before we. What? Was it a motion or a discussion? I thought we had a motion and a second. All right, let's do this all over again. Can I get a motion? Okay. All right, all in favor? Aye. Opposed? Carried. Anything else before we pay bills and adjourn? Can I get a motion to pay bills as audited? Sure, I just don't support it. We, we need a motion um, for to pay bills as audited. Pay minutes, I will. Thank you. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Carried. Can I get a motion to adjourn at 8.58? Aye. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Carried. See you in two weeks.